It is a pleasure and an honor to be in this plenary celebrating the 25th anniversary of EASA. In 1990, uh, three years after, In 1990, three, three years after graduating in anthropology, I attended the first EASA conference in Coimbra, at a time when Portuguese anthropology was undergoing an expansion process. In the di dictatorial regime that lasted in Portugal until the 1974, the place of anthropology was limited to the support of the colonial administration and the ethnographic survey of a barely modern rural country. In the post-revolutionary decade, anthropological research responded to the key challenge of, training, of freeing the conceptions of Portugality from the ideological ties equated by the dictatorship. By the end of the 1980s, Portuguese anthropology was vibrant, but lacked the capacity to engage in international debates. The creation of EASA in 1989 was an important turn point for anthropology and also for Portuguese anthropology, and its first conference was a success. It was the beginning of a period of change in circulation in the dialogues and in the ways of practicing anthropology in an intense movement that ended the barriers dividing worlds, promoting the exchange of ideas and critical thinking, which the, is the cornerstone of social sciences and anthropology itself. 25 years later, we witness a permanent circulation of researchers, teachers, students, and ideas between European countries. There are grants, joint projects, collective publications, networks, and challenge channels that foster the circulation of knowledge, practices, and theoretical developments. In our peripheral condition, Portuguese anthropologists were very successful in addressing the challenges of contemporary society. We managed to create a distinctive voice through the articulation of the networks in Europe and the Atlantic world, namely with vibrant anthropologies from the Portuguese-speaking world, which Brazilian uh, anthropology is a good example. These bridges for collaboration were one of the most important outcomes of EASA. Given the economic and bureaucratic constraints that emerged by the end of the decade of 2010, as well as the new ideologies in the research policies among the, coming from the European Union funding programs, EASA is now a new challenge. We must keep alive what we have built together, preserving our way of doing anthropology as a place of creativity and cognitive adventure, avoiding the quantitative and policy-driven turn in research funding. This is no small challenge. The next coming years will certainly be a bleak, due to another long and paralyzing period of recession in Southern Europe with tragic results for social sciences and anthropology in particular. As is well known, one of the most devastating consequences of crises in Southern European countries were the applied structural adjustments policies, which focusing on reducing uh, public uh, deficit savagely attacked the areas of education and healthcare. By punishing these countries for having, uh, for having wasted resources to pursue the reaching of uh, European developmental st uh, standards, the goal of convergence with Central and Northern U Europe is definitely over. The crisis and its subsequent adjustments will place Southern Europe permanently in, on the periphery and consequently ending the basis of the European project. In Spain, Greece, Portugal and Italy, cuts made in education were severely applied in research, research funding, particularly affecting the amount available for social sciences, which already was smaller than in, the, in Northern European Europe. With the quasi disappearance of public funding, a whole new generation of young and not so young anthropologists is facing an uncertain future as a conse consequence of the abrupt changes brought about by the economic crisis in the European project. 
The remarkable work done in the previous decades is such at risk. Many had to seek abroad the means to continue their careers. Likewise, anthropologists from around the world who found in Portugal or in Spain creative environments for their research and who were an important contribution to the dynamism of the local anthropological projects during the 1990s and the 2000s were forced to move once again. Nevertheless, we must bear in mind that marginalization of social sciences and humanities is not just a result of cuts in funding. It is mainly the result of political and ideological orientations which define that research should be in line with economic and technological development. We are talking about politics of, of knowledge. Funding policies all over Europe are giving preference to research with an entrepreneurial scope, aiming to address societal challenges that support the development of public policies. In this context, the threats to anthropology are increasing. However, apart from the concrete problems that the crisis brought to the development of anthropology, it is necessary to draw attention to the fact that the crisis itself is an extraordinary terrain on inequality in the contemporary world. Ironically, the effects of austerity resulting from the crisis, which are threatening the, dis the discipline in several countries, become a, re a relevant field of reflection to many anthropologists who seek to understand the new social context created by the growth of poverty, inequality, social polarization, and the reactions to traditional political systems and their connections to the global capitalist system. Anthropology is particularly well placed to describe and understand these changes in the everyday life of people in social contexts in crisis, deprivation, and austerity. By approaching life experience and subjectivity, ethnography rents visible frameworks of interpersonal relations and analyzes the ways in which the crisis affects people and their livelihoods, transforming them, transforming their social networks, and building on their experience viewpoints constructs a critical perspective that overcomes the simplistic dichotomy between particularly livelihoods and contemporary global capitalism. The crisis that is presented to us in the media and in the political discourse is not, as they would have us to believe, just another crisis. One typical of the cyclical nature of the capitalist political economic system or the cyclical or counter-cyclical ways in which modernity is perceived and experienced. While there are some of, uh, who have fallen into poverty for the first time as the result of unemployment, others saw their expectations of upward social mobility threatened by the situation and there are yet others who live in a permanent and timeless crisis beyond economic conjunctions. It is a crisis that reveals the more specific processes of the financialization of capital, of increasing virtuality, of dis distancing the state from the management of the res publica, of collective representations, and the ever greater interconnectivity of economic, political, and cultural process. To a certain extent, the crisis with a capital C confirms the already announced crisis thus fulfilling a role that legitimizes certain policies and confirms the need for them. This is where anthropology, critical alternative thinking, can play an important role so that what is a threat to anthropology can become an opportunity by offering an alternative approach to the study of social life and policies in contemporary capitalistic societies. Anthropological analysis turn the policies themselves into objects of study. As we all know, anthropology does not present models. Instead, we show how people are affected by the models in their daily life and how they creatively overcome the problems presented to them. At the end of the day, the results of our projects are not summed up in charts, percentage, but in the forms of stories, subjective ways of experience and making sense of the world, that is to say, humanized knowledge. 
our current challenge is to demonstrate widely that our understanding of the world is not just an intimate, exotic view of particular individuals. We must show that humanization we introduce in the models in the, is important. In fact, we just don't just study the native's point of view. Rather, we place them in a wider context by studying processes which connect policies, livelihoods, people, economies, institutions, and diverse political system. It is therefore urgent to find better ways to communicate the importance of anthropological research and the deepness by which we understand and reveal complex social problems, even if we do this in a small and non-representative universes and addressing daily life matters and not macroeconomic issues. This is why EASA is of central importance to challenge the Ten, sorry, this is why it is of central importance, uh, EASA is of central importance to the challenge that anthropology is facing in these times of crisis. In times of an economic crisis, it is urgent that EASA become a voice in the funding agencies all over Europe and not only in the central European agencies. It is also imperative that EASA is heard by the agencies that f define funding policies for research and science development. In times of a philosophical crisis of the import importance of anthropological knowledge for a better understanding of the complexity of social life, it is crucial that EASA develops creative ways to show the relevance of the knowledge that we produce to rehumanize econo economics, it, identifying the complexity of lived experience and shared knowledge. To conclude, let's go back to the title of this 13th EASA biannual conference, Collaboration, Intimacy and Revolution. We have collaborated. In, in doing so, we have gotten inti a bit intimate. <laughs> and now we must think <laughs> if we uh, want to make a revolution that guarantees that we have the kind of anthropology that we all stand for. Thank you so much.